Well, I, I have three pieces, uh, very different from each other. Uh, I like to play with colors and shapes, patterns, textures. Uh, sometimes I like to create something that might cause someone to stop and think, is this something that has a practical purpose or had a practical purpose? Uh, uh, I enjoy burning things and shrinking things and uh, letting things age etching, uh, copper, and, you know, plastics and stuff like that. I like to work with you know, what happens if, if I treat things in a certain way, make them look like they've been existing for maybe hundreds of years. Other than that, there's, you know, a lot of it's just from waking up in the middle of the night and what can I do tomorrow? I think this gallery space is wonderful. Uh, it's, it's, it's a true you know, hidden jewel for Long Beach. I wish I had more parking. But uh, I think this gallery has so much going for it, potential to help really kind of bring the limelight, the, the, not limelight, but the, the spotlight back on the artists here in Long Beach. I think this all began with, initially with a uh, love of the California missions, with the figurines, the Santos figures, the retablo paintings. Um, and we just, it, that always spoke to me, not, I guess you would say there was faith involved, though I'm not at, in the least religious, but I do enjoy the idea of, of the faith, and I also love the, the images of the face, especially when it's in, there's showing emotion, such as sorrow, <laughs> and, uh, Happiness doesn't appeal to them. I do like uh, portraying uh, sorrow, and um, I just like the expression of the face. So you find that a lot in religious art. Uh, so I enjoyed icons. I tried bringing some of that in icon painting, icon figuring into some of the work. I hope that people enjoy them and, and get something from them when they see them. I would, like I say, I would be doing this whether anyone saw it or not, but I think it's amazing and I just, like, I'm thrilled right now looking around the room at all the creativity. Um, yeah, I just, I love it. So these are one-time individual pieces built directly in the material that is intended to be the finished product. Um, they're all layered, so I start with the armature and I just start spatuling on layers of plaster, mixing the color into the plaster. Sometimes the color goes in the glazes. Sometimes I use glazes, sometimes I just use color in the plaster or vice versa. Um, I started out originally as a painter. I don't paint so much anymore, but um, I was trained as a you know, classical figurative painter. And usually color well, it comes from the, you know, the innate color of any objects that you're using, but it also comes from the light. And when you're working with figures, how the skin absorbs light is really specific to that model or that light source in that time and place. And so I've treated them, at least in the initial pieces, I've tried to treat them as if I was painting that figure. So the color comes from the sense of like a directionality of the light source and how the skin absorbs that light source. Long Beach, we have a huge art community and I feel like it, it actually is really important to be working in part of a community that those people, you know, they're your people, they're your support system, they're people you can draw on for their inspiration, ideas, help, if you've got some kind of a creative block going on you can call on those people. And knowing that there are places where artwork can be shown, you know, they, they come and go. I mean, even in big cities like New York or LA, galleries come and go. And so having a space that is willing to show work and provide that environment for people to look at work and be together to look at work and talk about them, I think it's really important to keeping that creative flow going. It's, I think it's crucial to like the lifeblood of a city. You know, Hong Kong is a really crowded city, and when I was young, we live in Hong Kong in a really small apartment, and um, we have 13 members of our family all living in a really tiny apartment. 
The idea is to express the notion of confinement, reflect the situation I live in Hong Kong. So, so the other pieces that I, I do is also do the hanging garments and uh, also, you know, to um, assimilate uh, the situation about hanging clothes outside the window. I use pillow because to, as a metaphor to um, uh, signify human body. The surface of the latest, when I finish it and get the form out, is really delicate. Just like skin of the human. So, in a way, it's I kind of maybe, as I said, you know, this, this uh, installation, I call it mini installation because it's not an installation for my whole project, but the two together really imply something about my life experience. I decided to show work that I created after being in uh, Kenya and Tanzania for three weeks visiting the uh, Maasai, Kikuyu, and the Samburu tribes. Uh, I was very profoundly impacted by that experience. When I was in Kenya and Tanzania, these tribes that are suffering the most from climate change are the least responsible for it. Their whole lifestyle is being forced to change. So some of this work embodies, the, uh, for me, the spirit of survival that they embody, their love and respect and care for nature, and of course the wild animals that I was able to be up close and personal with were just amazing and really goes beyond words. One of my pieces, uh, Scorched Earth Spirits, again based on the the Maasai people, uh, the, the earth is cracked and yet their power of love and tenacity, um, they just managed to power on through and have a fantastic familial life. Being an artist, it communicates in ways to people that are not always about words. It's a kind of intelligence. When they experience something that moves them, it's magic. And I really am thrilled to be able to get an opportunity to, to put out what I do that keeps me healthy and whole. I have to do it. If I don't do it, I'm, I'm not whole. And to have an opportunity to share it with others is just really an honor. This is some of my wood sculpture abstract uh, where I've taken pretty much the raw fallen timbers and created them as they've spoken to me during the process. Uh, I, it usually comes from the wood. I spend a lot of time before I start into the piece. It'll sit on my bench for quite a while. We have conversations, the wood and I, until we decide where I want to go with it. I, I, I started turning in my early days. I still have my lathe. Uh, like with clay, I got bored with round bowls, so I started breaking them and reassembling them. Uh, I also would carve them quite heavily. Uh, but that changed when I found these gorgeous stumps of wood after a rainstorm in the streets and everywhere, and I decided to follow nature shape and try and bring out the beauty of the wood. And that's got me away from the lathe. I'm out there almost every day. Uh, and this COVID time has afforded me, it really hasn't changed my work schedule. Uh, I'm out there anyway, so that's where my time goes and I'm excited to see there's a sculpture show, and I was very pleased to be asked to be a participant. I brought uh, uh, one of my very new pieces, a uh, combination of what I call is going to probably be my trash series, and uh, it's kind of created off the leftovers from other pieces of work, and, and 
restructured pieces of work and trash out of the, literally out of my trash cans at home and dumpsters and the trash bin at the studio. And, and uh, I've always had this thing with working with uh, cardboard uh, and in working with cardboard, usually I work with it in tubes or flat surfaces and I've always been fascinated by the corrugated edge. I guess I should correctly call it corrugated paper. Uh, cardboard is like a Cheerios box. Uh, so I've been working a lot with corrugated paper and the edge is kind of fascinating. Uh, and if you try to work with it and try to create something that's kind of structured, uh, if you tear it by hand, it does all sorts of strange and kind of wonderful things the way it comes apart. And uh, that's kind of what I've been working on in my new pieces. Plus, like I said, gathering scraps and bits of uh, trash from various and sundry items. Um, but I'm into my fifth piece now and I'm finding it really fascinating. And of course, this being in the period of time of period, COVID and, and the Me Too era, there's a lot of stress going on, and this piece just seems to deal a lot, helps me deal a lot with that kind of stress. I knew Rod Briggs. I'd show Rod Briggs in my former gallery a couple of times. Uh, a wonderful man, uh, very talented. This space that he created is really special. There's really good ghosts here. We're kind of gallery starved. Uh, with the first city of a half a million people, but I get it. I mean, we're in the shadow of Hollywood and major art structures. But this is really serving a wonderful purpose. It, uh, the group itself is a wonderful collection of artists, very sensitive, very caring people also. And uh, they've come together to form what I see as a kind of a co-op uh, group and they're giving back to the community. They're giving back to, and Rod's family, Rod Briggs' family, the artist that created this, is giving back to the community. Really giving back to the community. And it's the one thing I think that is, that is really exciting. Uh, they're giving an anchor port. This is one of the galleries in town that is creating an anchor for the arts community. Mm -hmm.